Hey everyone, Jordan here. Welcome to my review of the RTX 5070 from NVIDIA. Now, MSI very kindly sent over their Inspire X3 OC model for me to review on the embargo day. It's my first launch card that I've done on the channel yet, so pretty big milestone and obviously something that I'm new at, so please bear with me as we go through this video. I'm filming this very late and literally on the day of release, so it's going to be a bit of a flying by the seat of my pants <laughs> experience. I've got information everywhere to tell you all about. I've done a lot of testing over the last week or so, and I've got uh, loads of information to show you, obviously, in the second half for testing and things like that. But first, let's cover the card. So I'm going to put on the screen the main changes we're going to see for the 5070 over the previous generation 4070. We've both basically got an increase everywhere from the CUDA cores, the RT cores, Tensor cores. We've got more ROPs. We've now got 12 gigabytes of GDDR7 memory over the GDDR6X that we saw on the 4070. We've also got a higher bandwidth and then also a little bit more power draw as well. Now another thing being this is an OC edition that's going to have a little bit of a higher overclock than the founder edition will, so just something to bear in mind, but realistically maybe like one or two FPS difference, nothing major. For a little bit of a different colour scheme, we've got a nice bronze and black Theme going with a couple of white accents like here for the MSI logo for example. I also found this looks a little bit more silver in a system as well so the bronze you're seeing here isn't quite as intense when you do have it fitted in a build. More of a traditional style of graphics card I'd say as well so you've got a three fan design these are Stormforce fans and then you've got your nickel plated copper base plate. You can see three heat pipes coming from the inside of that. It does go the full length as well we have got one of those fans that blows through to the back plate there as well with the open design. In terms of the dimensions, this is 288 by 112 and then a 50 millimeters thick, so two and a half slots, but relatively small in terms of a 50 series class card. I'm sure you can get smaller ones that are SFF form factor cards being made for 50 series. So if you do want something even smaller, you can get those on the market. But for a you know, 50 series card, I think this is fairly small anyway, certainly in comparison to some other ones you'll see later on in the video. MSI using a V-shaped heatsink on this, apparently that helps aid pass through. We've also got Dr. Boss power on this card as well. And then at the other end, we have got our display options. So we've got three display ports and then one HDMI. So a bit of a quicker look around the card, but I really want to get onto the testing and results. So let's get into that now. Okay, so onto the testing. I use my usual 12900K test system on this. I did debate using an X3D, but I do love to give you guys the baseline performance. So obviously, if you then use an X3D processor yourself, you'll see that benefit. Whereas if I give you results on an X3D, where I'm using level three cache that you guys don't have, it's going to inflate the figures a little bit. So I have stuck with the 12900K for now for that kind of baseline. We might use an X3D in the, in the future if you know there's enough demand for seeing results like that but i kind of want to give you the performance that you could expect and then obviously anything else you can benefit from uh, that's down to the individual user uh, other things to mention we've got a z690 hero there's 32 gigabytes of kingston memory i'll put the full specs on the screen for you to see um, but i did use that system to keep everything nice and consistent I also got halfway through the testing, I was testing 4K and 1440p, but it was taking far too long. And I thought what we'll do for this one is we'll count off 4K and we'll stick with 1440p. That's where this card sits best anyway. Um, with 4K, you could expect console like frame rates. You will need a DLSS to just to push those frames if you really want to run a 4K um, high refresh monitor, for example, you will need some AI help. Um, so not really a round, I don't think this card's going to sit in for most people. But I will do a full 50 series roundup with all of the cards. I'm planning to test even more and do them all in 4K as well. So we'll have a massive graph in my full 50 series roundup. So get subscribed and ding the bell so you didn't miss that. So yeah, we have got a bigger sample size because I've just cut down to 1440p. First of all, we're going to start off with 3D Mark Time Spy and Steel Nomad. These are ones that you can download for yourself if you want to test against the system you're currently using. See how it compares. We've also then got Apex Legends, Crisis Remastered, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Dirt 5, Starfield, Far Cry 6, and then Cyberpunk in a range of ray traced and DLSS options. We'll talk to you more about that in a minute. Now going through these charts, you'll see that the 5070 is pretty much on par with the 4070 Super. It does outperform the 4070 Ti at certain points, but it does look like a little bit of a refresh of the 4070 Super predominantly. Some other things you might notice is there are some pretty poor 1% lows in there. I think that's just down to drivers. We've only got one that actually allows the 5070 to work at the time of filming. So hopefully that's something that will be ironed out in the future. Now, going back to the sample size I mentioned earlier, I just want to say a big thank you to Scan Computers. They've sent over a lot of graphics cards for 
reviews and builds and like bundles and things like that over the last uh, like 12 months uh, a little bit further than that as well and i will be also using some more of the cards that they've sent in the full 50 series overview that i mentioned or roundup and we'll be testing a lot more in there some older stuff as well is something i want to put in 5080s is one that i think will uh, be quite a comparison that's a very popular card and i think people will be wondering about the jump from that to the 5070 so that's something we'll be testing as well um, but yeah that roundup should be really cool but yeah just wanted to jump in uh with a thank you to the scan guys because uh i think we have about three cards without them guys so yeah the sample size would be very bleak without them so big thank you to them so other things we could talk about we have done wattages from the wall something new uh for this review the 5070 is coming in just over 450 watts there obviously a little bit higher as we now have a 250 watt tdp on this card over the 200 that came with the 4070 now things about this card itself specifically the msi model i think it's built very well uh, it's an all nice metal construction temperatures have been very good i've also got temperature charts that i'll put on the screen for you to see now as well and then also other things to note i didn't hear the fans spinning up you can customize these with the msi center if you wish um, but the custom default fan profile was very quiet and like i mentioned yeah i didn't hear it at all and there was no coil wine from this one as well even during the crisis menu which is something i always find brings it out into cards um, for the amount of time that i'm on the menu but i didn't hear it in this one as well so that's a rare occurrence um, last little things to talk about the dls testing against the 4090 is it faster than a 4090 no shocker if i put the results on the screen you'll see that the 5070 just gets absolutely destroyed by the 4090 in native performance there's only one scenario where the 5070 is faster and that is with using dls4 what nvidia are very carefully wording and if you'll see i'm going to put the benchmark from cyberpunk on screen using dls4 this wasn't the one that i recorded this was just one that i wanted to record to show you how weird it was there were some really weird effects following certain parts of the benchmark so for example looking at the grills on the floor in the bar and then later on there's some fans in the background that just looks like there's like seven or eight blades after doing so many benchmark runs with all the different cards and obviously getting used to that benchmark knowing how it should look when i switched to dls4 for the first time and then watched it back it was just so like jarringly different so yeah it does add like a trail to certain things some weird effects it's like when you look at elevators um when they're stacked there's a certain effect you can get as long as very similar to that uh, it's not something you get with any of the other dlss tests uh just dls4 so obviously you need to work and um that's the only way you're going to get this card to be faster than the 4090 and it certainly isn't a mode that i'd want to use all the time either um yeah it just looks very weird at the moment so the 5070 overall we saw a 17 percent uplift from the 4070 but a measly 1.93 percent uplift to the 4070 super makes it really hard to recommend obviously the only way you're going to get a real performance benefit out of this is by using the dlss um four but it just seems like this generation is all about AI and just pleasing the shareholders. I think Nvidia have really fallen out of touch of what gamers actually want. But you know, as long as they're making money, who cares about us, right? Um, I just hope that the AMD 9070 and 9070 XT really does um, impact Nvidia and the kind of gives them a, a wake up to uh, to see what we actually want. Uh, then they can actually get back to making something that's you know, competitive and we'll see some uh, some improvements in the next gen and a bit more back and forwards between the brands to uh, to bring prices down and bring us back what we want rather than just AI that at the moment just looks really kind of unusable. So I think that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've tried to include as much stuff as I possibly can in the kind of time frame, but like I mentioned, I will be doing my roundup with more data and 4k and all that kind of stuff in there as well so please get subscribed and ding the bell if you enjoyed this video and you are waiting for that one we are going to have a lot of builds on the channel as well after all of the launch stuff is done um, i'm aiming for a build a week so we're going to be very busy with builds so that's something else to look forward to as well like i mentioned uh did i mention i can't remember by this point but if there's anything else you'd like to know leave a comment I'll leave the links in the description. A big thank you to Scan as well for sending out all the cards that you've seen covered in the charts. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you all in the next one.